Throughout history, free thinkers have outraged the religious with their wacky ideas about the virtues of free speech, reason, and of course, eating babies. Now, God is dying, and it's time to dispose of his remains. From the pits of hell, Satan sends two puppets of the imperialist West and the Zionist Jews against God, Islam, and tiny kittens to bring you their propaganda and conspire for a new world order. This is Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment with Ali Rizwi and Armin Navabi. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Secular Jihadist for a Muslim Enlightenment. My name is Ali Rizvi, and with me is Armin Navabi. For those of you who are patrons and watching this, Armin has these sexy new glasses. Uh, actually, no, you guys can all see it on his uh, new Twitter picture and his Facebook picture. What, what brought on the glasses? Well, well, first of all, I put it on to see if it helps with my eye strain because I look at the screen all the time. But to be honest, so many people told me that it looks good that I'm now wearing it just because of that. Just so, are they powered at all or they're just like plain glass? No, there's UV protection for the screen. Oh, UV protection. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, something yeah. like that. It's, it's for it's for for people who are looking at. I don't know what it protects, but it's basically it makes you not. It's it's good for sleeping as well. So you're not constantly looking at the screen, and then when you go to sleep, that it just messes with your sleep. So I don't know. Yeah, you can see more your dreams more clearly. Um. So. Yes. Um, but I got yeah, a lot so, of positive comments, so that's good, right? Yeah, there's there so th there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on, and I don't even know how to handle it. I mean, the whole thing, the entire world is turning into a kind of shit show. I don't know. Um, it's a weird time, and it's also I don't know. I don't want to say exciting, but there's a lot of anticipation. It feels like nobody's going to know what's going to happen. Uh, at the heart of all of this is currently what's happening in the United States. You know, as we're speaking. Um, you know, there's a lot of things happened. The Breonna Taylor, you know, the, the cops that killed her haven't been charged. There's protests going on. So those things have fired up again. Uh, but really the main news and one of the biggest things that have changed and, and thrown a whole wrench into the U.S. election is the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's only the second uh, woman justice ever to be appointed to the Supreme Court. Um, she really stuck it out. She is had cancer diagnoses several times. Um, she's been pretty sick recently. She was in fairly good health before that. And she tried to hold on as long as she could, but she died just weeks before the election. And now, um, for those of you who are not familiar with this, the US uh, currently has a Supreme Court with uh, nine justices on it. Five of them uh, have been appointed by conservatives. So they lean conservative. Uh, four of them, including Ruth Bader Ginsburg, were uh, appointed by liberal presidents, and they lean liberal. Now that Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died, Donald Trump has the opportunity to appoint a new justice. And this means that the U.S. Supreme Court is almost certainly headed for a six to three conservative majority. That's six conservative justices and three liberal justices. And um, he hasn't really named an appointee yet, but um, the consensus generally is that he's probably going to appoint uh, Amy Coney Barrett, who is a very religious woman um, and has uh, gone so far as saying that she's committed to building, quote unquote, the kingdom of God. So right now, a lot of things are at stake in the U.S. There is, uh, a, you know, the, the universal health care, Obamacare is probably gone. Roe v. Wade abortion rights, probably gone. You have a 6-3 majority. Uh, and now... Uh, one of the things that really concerns us here at Secular Jihadists is the future of secularism. Secularism, separation of church and state. We know Brett Cow has been so she washed on that. We had Andrew Vital here to talk about it in a previous episode. And now uh, if this new justice is appointed, or really any other justice um, that Trump appoints, um, it, we're going to have the same kind of situation where church-state separation is going to be interpreted very differently by these judges. So, uh, so yeah, uh, there is a lot happening. Ar Armin, what did you think of Ruth Bader Ginsburg? I mean, okay. I, 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 because everybody has already mentioned all the positives, I just want to ask maybe a little bit of a 
pushback, maybe a devil's advocate version of this because everybody is already telling her, she's, she's great, okay? She was fantastic, okay? And I agree with that. And she's like her history, her activism, uh, even before she became a Supreme, like there's so much to say about that. But here's a question I have. This is a criticism of her, right? Mm -hmm. Why didn't she step down when Obama was the president to make sure that this would not happen so that Obama could, you know, given that she was dealing with cancer and she could have died at any moment, um, why didn't she make guarantee that she would be replaced by uh, an Obama nominee rather than a Trump one when she had the chance? That's a good question. And I think it's fair too. Um, I think that uh, what happened um, uh, during uh, well, I think that this, the person who did do that is Anthony Kennedy. So Anthony Kennedy was a conservative appointed justice who did step down, right, recently. That's how Kavanaugh came in. Um, and uh, he stepped down when Trump was in power. He knew that Trump is going to appoint another conservative justice, and he appointed one of a guy who previously worked for Anthony Kennedy, Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, so that worked out. And you had that kind of situation with Bader Ginsburg. I'm not sure exactly why she didn't step down. I think. Part of it was that everybody just really, really assumed that the 2016 election was, you know, the cake was baked, that Hillary Clinton was going to win, that there was going to be no issues. So I don't think she saw too much of a risk and she decided to keep on working. Um, and when Trump got elected, she realized, oh, my God, um, I'm going to have to stick it out for four more years. And she almost did, to her credit. But you're right. And as for her legacy, you're right. Like, there's... She has a great, I mean, if you're a woman who can open a credit card in your own name, that's because of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. If you can get bank accounts, you can do all of the stuff, your legal banking documents in your own name, that's because of her. Uh, until very recently, you couldn't do that. Um, she made it happen. So she's, uh, you know, she's an, an icon, like an actual true icon in the way that, that she worked. And unfortunately, what's happening is a lot of her life story and the things that people can learn about her um, and get inspired by has been completely, completely overrun by the political conversation about this. It's freaked the hell out of Democrats. Um, they have donated like crazy to Democratic candidates where I think it's uh, over a over hundred million dollars have come in in just like the first two days after her death. I mean, the first night, I think but, they maybe had like 36 million or something. But this last miscalculation of her yeah, uh, could really screw over Americans for generations to come. Mm -hmm. So this, like, I don't know if it's fair to say that. Is that fair to say that? Like, this is like a huge, you know, like the, the amount of rights that will be taken away, the amount of enlightenment values that are going to be challenged, secularism, women rights, all of that, everything that she fought for, could go out the window because of this miscalculation by her because she didn't she didn't step down when she should have stepped down Is yeah I, I i i think it's fair hmm. well, i think there's the no other pushback? side to it right. no there's no pushback to that i think i mean you're, you're asking why didn't she do what anthony kennedy did Right. Up down while I think working. I'm moving a little bit too harsh and you're not pushing back on me. <laughs> I no, I don't think you agree. Okay. okay so I'll, let me try to push back. So I'll push okay. back with what I think is obvious to everybody. I, I don't think anybody thinks you're being too harsh. I think uh, you're talking like the only thing I would say that may be too harsh is actually blaming her for, you know, why didn't you anticipate your own death and take that risk? But no, know, no, that's be fair. I, no, no, but but yeah. Armin, on if you're on the Supreme Court and you have a lifetime appointment and you know that you know, in a way, the U.S. is a kind of all about Yeah, if you know that, then um, when you're in that situation, you have to take that into stock. I mean, Joe Biden says it. He's like, yeah. Especially I'm if you have cancer. What's the type of cancer she had? Pancreatic. That's what my mom died from. Yeah. I don't know if she was diagnosed. I don't know when she was diagnosed with it. So I don't that know. That is like one of the, that's one of the, one of the worst. The worst one, like, yeah. But I don't think she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer back then. Okay. When my mom got pancreatic cancer, I was like, okay, people survive cancer and stuff like that. My mom has a chance. We could Maybe I have 10 more years with her. And the doctors were like, no, 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 no. You don't mm -hmm. understand. This is not just your average cancer. This is pancreatic cancer. She doesn't Armin. have zero. Uh, uh, she was yeah. first diagnosed with early stage, early stage pancreatic cancer in 2009. Mm. 2009. 
that's the year that Obama was inaugurated. So I think that you, I think your criticism is fair. Hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the fair. so she know that she had chances were extremely low, right? Yeah, that's actually um, like she didn't have any uh, symptoms or anything like that. She th she was going to fight it, but yeah, during the Obama time, I think Obama was president for eight years after that. Hmm. So yeah, I don't I don't think that that's unfair at all. So, okay, so let me do another. Okay, so um, right. one one pushback is that n nobody like right now we've all normalized the Donald Trump thing. We all completely normalize. I don't think so. Yet Ruth Bader Ginsburg was very good friends with Antonin Scalia, right? Antonin Scalia is like the super. Yeah, they super were right buddy guy. buddies. They were buddy buddies. They went on they trips in, together. They rode an elephant together in India, yeah. right? <laughs> they, no, they went on trips together. They did everything. Yeah. They had Christmas together with their families. So she was. I don't think that she had a, uh, a problem. I think that she may have been okay. Hey, you know, if you have a conservative president, you appoint a justice, whatever. It may have been. Uh, but I don't think anybody anticipated at that time. Now we've normalized it, but I don't think anybody thought of the whole Trump thing happening. And but right. here's the, here's the thing: if he gets, uh, we, there's two angles to this. One is what's going to happen to the Supreme Court and long term, all the decisions they're going to make. The second thing is that how is this going to affect the election? So on the second question, there's a actually a good chance that it could. Uh, it's not going to help Trump much, um, depending on how he plays it because it's, it's going to galvanize the Democrats a lot more. And Democrats have never been really been galvanized over uh, Supreme Court justices the way that um, uh, conservatives have. So the Republicans in 2016 said this was one of their major factors. They didn't like Donald Trump, but they held their noses, voted for him because of the Supreme Court. That's why the Christian evangelicals were all for him. Um, this time, it seems like the, the Republicans are not as motivated by the Supreme Court. The Democrats are more motivated by it. So... It, when it comes to that, it's different. But when you're talking about the next few decades of legislation, um, like there's no doubt that the Supreme Court's going to matter. If Trump gets elected, re-elected again, you could have potentially a seven to two hmm. conservative majority Supreme Court by the end. There of the is an army of it, Christians out there that care about nothing else but saving fetuses mm -hmm. like nothing when it comes global warming be damned poverty be damned police violence none of this matters because everything when it comes to politics in the united states is about in their minds stopping a daily genocide numbers that they consider to be w way worse than the big edge oh i have to okay uh -huh. We have to be very. I have something, an announcement to make. Actually, I just realized that. Okay, oh, no, we have I to be know. more careful with our wording right now. So I cannot say the big edge. You know what I'm referring to, right? The thing that the people in the World War II did with the people that start with the J, right? The the I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah, is yeah. it. Right? Yeah, okay. So that hap that hap they think those numbers happens in the United States over and over again with fetuses, right? But again, the reason why I'm being I'm gonna make an announcement by the way. Right now, I didn't tell this to Ali. I was gonna make this to Ali while we're on air. The reason I'm, I'm also being careful to make sure that I, I am not pissing off YouTube is because we got our monetization back on Secular Jonas YouTube channel. Yay! It's back. How did that happen? It, it, I just checked and it, I, I appealed it and it took like like months. I mean, almost a year now and eventually we got it back, okay? But we have to play the, like, we have to be careful with the words that we use just so we don't lose it again, right? So, but the, yeah, we got the monetization back. So now we're monetized on YouTube. I YouTube monetize. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but th that happened. But uh, yeah. Okay. Good. So just wanted to let you know. But yeah. again, so this is um, a daily, uh, you know, a daily genocide. And I think they believe that nobody should care about anything else other than this because they see this as literally murder happening all the time. And the government in the United States allows it. And mm -hmm. the only way to stop that is to restack the judges at the Supreme Court. And when they're voting for a president, they don't even, they don't, these people, they don't care about any of the policies. They don't care if the president is um, a real Christian, not a real Christian. None of that matters. Okay. They think this as a harm that needs to be stopped. 
Um, and as long as they could be sure that this president is going to pick conservative judges that is going to try to roll back to fight against that, that's how they're going to vote. Um, mm. And so far they're winning. So far they're, they're getting winning. everything. They're winning. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting the last laugh. I mean, people used to make fun of him. They're like, this is a guy who says two Corinthians. This is a guy who can't name a verse from the Bible. He doesn't know anything about religion. He's probably an atheist. You know, what are you doing? He's been married three times, had five kids. Why are you supporting this guy? He's like the most, according to them, non-Christian guy ever. But it turns out that uh, now they have a 6-3 conservative majority Supreme Court. And, and by the way, you know, so there's a question over here, for those who don't know, is uh, that Merrick Garland was, you know, after Antonin Scalia died in 2016, it was, I think, February 2016, uh, that was many, many months before the 2016 election. And Mitch McConnell, who has been essentially, who's been like the instrumental in completely transforming the U.S. judiciary and stacking all of the federal courts with conservative judges, uh, him and Trump together. Um, at that point, uh, he said that, no, we're not going to do it. You know, this is an election year. We're going to let the next president appoint it. And uh, the Democrats couldn't do anything about it. They couldn't do anything because there was a filibuster. They needed... Uh, 60 votes, right, in the Senate to approve. Um, so, I, you know, at, at that time it was very different. They needed 60 votes to approve the judge. And uh, if they had less than 60, which they did, had fewer than 60, they didn't have 60 senators and the Democratic senators in the Senate. So uh, the Republicans could, uh, Republicans could easily filibuster and wouldn't approve it. So one of the things that the Trump administration did as soon as they came in and Mitch McConnell is they abolish the filibuster. So now you can actually mm. get a Supreme Court judge approved with just 51 votes, mm. simple majority. And very they have clever to by them, by the way. Like, it's very, like, a lot of people, like, they're hypocrites. They're, I don't think, like, I mean, as much as we're against everything they stand, you know, they stand for, not everything, mostly, but this is like, they, they just play politics better than the Democrats. I mean, this is not hypocrisy. This is them getting exactly what they want and playing the game better than the other side. Yeah, this is, and, and this is an, uh, that's an absolute fact. And mm -hmm. this, it's one of the most frustrating things. And here's why they do this is because generally the vast majority of the US, well, I wouldn't say vast majority, but the majority of them are tend to be center left. Okay, they tend to be liberal. So Roe v. Wade, for example, 70% of the people in the US don't want Roe v. Wade, uh, um, they don't want it repealed, hmm. right? 70% of them actually support it. They want that law there. Now, what, what happens is that uh, when you, if you go to any law school, the majority of law students you're going to see are liberals. But the Republicans actually have these little groups and projects where they find conservative people in law schools. And at an early stage, it begins sort of like recruiting them, staying in touch with them, forming a network and keeping track of them so that when they get out, the, the conservative, the minority of the conservative law students and uh, they start giving them opportunities so they can make them judges. So uh, what they do is they focus on getting out candidates, they focus on getting out votes, and they focus on putting through judges, even though they're a minority. And what the liberals do, who actually are the majority, is they focus on tweeting, they focus on activism, and they focus on like I don't know, all the social media stuff in the media. Telling like, people to go get, be more radical, let this radicalize you. Like this yeah. is this is what they do. Okay, so these are the kind. Yeah. Of, yeah anyways, go. I mean, look at the example of like you know what happened to Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders. You saw the size of his rallies. You saw how many people were supporting him on Twitter. You would think that the way everybody hated Biden, they thought he was a neocon who was basically a Republican. Um, listen, but ultimately, when the votes came out, when it came down to the votes, there was no competition. You know, he got trounced. So there is a big um, what the way that it works for conservatives where the more extreme elements of conservatives can actually get elected in the U S right. um, the more extreme versions of liberals just can't like your far right Trumpian candidate will get elected. Your far left Bernie type candidate is not going to get elected. I mean, there's a, there's a very big difference in the way they work. And that might change. I mean, it could change, but right now that's the kind of situation. That so this whole filibuster, that means they were preparing for this situation early on. Like they were ready for this. They were. So there was always, actually it was a Democrats. Harry Reid uh, was yeah. former sort of Senate majority leader when the Democrats were there with Obama. 
he was a guy who suggested he's like we need to get rid of the filibuster. So a lot of Democrats yeah. did too because when Obama was in power, uh, the Republicans were filibustering everything he proposed, right, left, and center, everything. Right. So they wanted to get rid of the filibuster, and this is the case. People warned him, like, if you do this, it could backfire on you, and right. it backfired. This is the second time, or right. the third time, actually, after it's, the, it's going to backfire. It's very interesting because I, I consume both leftist and right-wing content, and the the liberal, the liberal leftist people, they're calling, again, I shouldn't use leftist and liberal interchangeably. I know, I know, but just, just chill. Right, but, just, uh, go ahead. Again, yeah, but a lot of leftist content creators are calling – the a lot of democrats are calling the republicans uh hypocrites because they're like oh you guys told us that we shouldn't push in um you know push for, you know a, a sitting a, a, a outgoing president shouldn't be able to uh elect uh, to select um a supreme court judge you have to wait for the people to vote and make their own decision because that was that's what you should be supposed to do. And now that Trump is leaving, you guys are now trying to get a uh, do do exactly what you guys said that we shouldn't be able to do. So you guys are hypocrites. But it's funny because now if you go to the conservative um, content creators, they're saying, "Oh, look, the Democrats are hypocrites <laughs> because they said you should be able to, right? Yeah. Because they're playing clips of the Democrats saying that." No, you should be able to. You're a president. This is your job. If this is your president, you should. It's your job to elect uh, Supreme Court judges while you're while you're the president. And like they're playing that. And like, no, look, the Democrats are hypocrites. They said the president should be able to pick, and now they're saying Trump shouldn't be able to pick one. So. Uh, you know, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, to be, to be fair, it was Mitch McConnell who made this argument. They did eventually go through with it, and they ended up blocking the Merrick Garland thing. So, but you're right. It's it's both, and you know, here's the th look. the The problem is that all of these people saying they're trying to guilt trip the republic. It's like, come on, you guys, you have to stick to principle, stick by your own rules. This is outrageous. Just <laughs> stop, stop with that. Stop with it because it's legal to nominate a Supreme Court justice as soon as there's a vacancy. A lame duck, what they call the the, the lame duck uh, Congress, which is the group of elected, like whoever's elected right now, this Republican majority is going to stay until December. Even if Trump loses, it's going to stay until December. So even between November and December, they can still approve this judge. They can do it all. And if it was a Democrat, if there was a Republican, if the Democrats had a chance to have a 6-3 Democrat majority Supreme Court, like liberal majority Supreme Court, um, and they were almost certain to lose the election, according to the polls. There was no filibuster, and all the conditions were the same. Of course, they would go ahead and do the same thing. They would do the exact same thing. That's what they wanted to yeah. do before. So it's not that. And I, I, I you know, I, I am, I would, am almost certainly would be a Democrat if I was American, right? But right, he, but but you're saying <laughs> right now is, yeah, they would do the same thing. But again, this this point, which is true, is something that this. Um, Conservative, conservative, conservative um, content creators are saying as well. They're like, "Oh, they're saying you shouldn't do this," but you guys know they would do the same thing if they were in our position. So yeah. don't let them. Don't like they 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 would play the same game. So again, it, it doesn't like you all know, like they're hypocrites. Like no, they're they're winning. They're no. winning. They they they're they winning. Are, yeah. yeah. They, they of course they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites on both sides. They're right. all hypocrites. But. When it comes to this, you know, this is the thing with politics. And this is one thing that I think the Bernie bros do not understand. Like all of these sort of like the Bernie type people. They're like, if it's not Bernie, it's nobody. If you don't have, like, you know, people will say we want Medicare for all. Like, of course you want Medicare for all. Everybody wants Medicare for all. Biden and Obama also wanted universal single payer health care. The only reason they can't do it is because half of the country is going to vote in conservatives. And you're not in a liberal dictatorship. Bernie Sanders is not a dictator. It's not going to happen. So Medicare for all, you know how many people it's going to cover? Zero, because it's not going to pass. It's not going to pass. They had a hard enough time passing Obamacare. So but that's the way that people have to think of this. I mean, this is, in, if this is it's politics. Politics means you have to win. Okay? If politics is about if you have power, you can do things. If you don't have power, you can't do shit. Right? So if you... If you don't win, you can't have power. Winning is everything. You have to win. And you can't win, right, if you decide to nominate a candidate who is 
um, just not supported by the few battleground states. That's, that's the other thing. And this is not a popular vote thing. If Biden wins the election by 1%, so 51-49, if he wins by 1%, that means he won the election. He only has a 6% chance of becoming president. Okay, so you don't have the U.S. president is not elected democratically. The U.S. president is elected constitutionally. And all of those things have to be taken into account. It's a small number of battleground states that determine it. And that's all there is to it. I mean, there's nothing else. You have to work within the system or you have to change it. But the starting point's the same for both of those. You know, is you have to win. That's all it comes down to. Um, By the way, this is this whole thing. It's amazing to me that how much politics and activism and um, emotional capital uh, and resources and money is being spent on something that literally does not matter. Like, think fetuses, right? Yeah. Like, imagine how much time how much the opportunity cost of all these people's political will is being spent on trying to, and the people lives of people, the rights that were being taken away and, you know, and people's control of on women on gay people, because even though these people are motivated on saving fetuses, the, the judges that they're going to put uh, in place are going to take other rights away as well. So it's not just going to be women rights, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be they're going to there's going to be a major setback in many different other areas, but all for the saving something that is not even self aware, right? Like it sh it should not be even as the smallest part of your calculation for you to go and try to save living beings that are not even self aware, like like um, so much wasted it's just it's mind-boggling that the, the most powerful country in the world is making decisions on policy based on saving fetuses yeah the thing with that is like you know with the way you say it a conservative listening to that would probably say oh okay so he's making it seem like saving fetuses is not a big deal he's like they're human not. beings they are going to, if you leave them there, they're eventually going to turn into a baby, right? So it's my jizz. And, and I was thinking that that's a really well, great argument for pedophiles, right? It's like, hey, listen, eventually she was going to turn into a woman. Ali, so. I told you. <laughs> yeah. I told you that we got monetized. Oh, you can't say to... that either? No, of course. That's one of the worst words that you could possibly say. I just oh. said we need to be more careful and play by YouTube's rules. Please do not say the P word. Oh, my God. Oh, right. that, I didn't know that was a P word. I thought it was – okay, I won't say Now I don't want to say any P word. Really, though? Know, but, I mean, that's I mean, something you can talk about critically. Yeah, YouTube's algorithm is not that smart. But do not use that word. But go on. Yeah. Just the thing is, like, I get – the. here's the thing. I understand the pro-life argument. I actually understand it. It's not like same-sex marriage where I just don't. There's no, there's no non-religious or no secular argument in favor uh, of, uh, you know, the, against uh, same-sex marriage. But for um, abortion, can we say abortion? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we can. Say yes, that. yes, you can say yeah. abortion. When it comes to that. I understand the pro-life argument. I can sympathize. Well, there you go, Susanna. Wait, can you um, go back to the previous com comment? And she's saying. To be honest, I still feel somewhat uncomfortable with abortion because of my Catholic indoctrination is pretty deep. But Susanna, it's not just that. There's a lot of secular people who have made uh, f good arguments against abortion. And yeah, you have to think about, like, if you're a libertarian, you actually think of a fetus as a human being, then, you know, killing a fetus is murder. You are going to think that, yes, it, it is murder. It's not the human being the part of the definition that matters. Is if you if your morality is based on avoiding harm, then the self awareness part is what matters. Not the because technically any cell in my body can be cloned and turned into a human being. So that's that's it. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's so. So we know that but, we won't we won't do an abortion here. But um, yeah. we, sh we should like maybe we should have a debate with somebody. An I, we should have. I don't think we've ever had an, uh, a thing on abortion. So I think we should. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like they, they're so obsessed with it. Anytime 9/11 happens, a lot of these evangelicals will blame abortion for it. It's like, oh, because you know you committed this genocide on so many fetuses, so of course 9/11 happened. I mean, that's the kind of things that they were saying. So there is a 
a bit of uh, an obsession with it. And I think that they're actually going to be successful. I think you know, once Roe v. Wade is gone, um, abortion is going to become illegal in about 27, 28 or more states uh, in the U.S. It's going to be illegal. So, um, right, the, this is, uh, it, it's a big deal for them. Uh, another, I think, a, and this is connected to it, obviously, because it's a religious motivation, but the separation of church and state is a really big deal too. So the First Amendment that, you know, no establishment of a religion by the state is a, um, Brett Kavanaugh has called it, you know, a bad reading of the First Amendment, secularism, the wall, the church state wall. Um, he's mentioned that. And let's look at like his, right now, Trump's favorite candidate is uh, Amy Coney Barrett. Okay. And she has talked about building the kingdom of God. Uh, she used to tell, uh, or hold on, let me actually read this. So, quote, when asked during the 2017 Senate hearing how she would weigh her faith with her responsibilities as a judge, Barrett said, it is never appropriate for a judge to impose that judge's personal convictions, whether they derive from faith or anywhere else. Okay, so that's what she said about it then. But she also, um, in her commencement speeches to uh, law students, uh, she would ask students to engage in prayer before engage, before accepting new jobs, uh, serving God, building a kingdom of God. I mean, there's a lot. She said, you will always keep in mind that your legal career is but a means to an end. And as Father Jenkins told you this morning, that end is building the kingdom of God. That your legal career, she said in commencement speeches to, legal, to law students, that, your, that the, the end, the means to an end for their legal career is to build the kingdom of God. So, is it too extreme of me to think that that should be grounds to take someone's license away from them or is that too extreme because i don't understand how you could trust I, anybody with that kind of motivation i think you should be able to disqualify somebody from the supreme court that. like for the supreme court i don't know about like this is, if someone says okay my they're a lawyer say that i want to the kingdom but if it's a judge anywhere who says that then yes, okay. I, okay. Absolutely. I don't. I think I don't. I, okay. Is it too? Okay. If you're like a doctor, right? Yeah. And you say, what would be the equivalent? If you say, my mission in life is to bring as many people to Jesus's kingdom as possible. Like I don't know. Like it would oh, be. I'll, like, I'll tell you what the equivalent would be. Equivalent. Would be. It's uh, you know, uh, you have an infection, but you know, um. Uh, if they say something like uh, antibiotic resistance isn't a real thing because evolution isn't real or some crap like that. Like or no, that. Yeah, but how about this? How about a doctor who thinks that suffering brings people closer to Jesus or uh, like people, you know, like kind of like a Mother Teresa um, kind of situation. I mean, like, yeah, you should be disqualified. No, you, you should disqualify. If you, you if, if, not no, only you shouldn't. Kind of like, I, yeah. No, this is kind of like, like a doctor telling medical students saying that, you know, your medical career ultimately is uh, a means to the end. And what you need to do is have your patients go that, I, I don't know what it is, but yeah. having your patients suffer. I mean, that sounds absolutely insane to feel but Jesus. We have, because we have to build the kingdom of God. It's ab like, it, it's just insane. It's, you know, this is, right. I think that's. So I think what she said, what she says, that your mission in life, or as a lawyer, should be to bring uh, the kingdom of God. I think that shouldn't just disqualify her to be a Supreme Court judge. I think that should disqualify her to be a lawyer, to be in any, have any legal capacity, like a, a judge, lawyer, anything. Is that too extreme of me to think that? No, it's right. absolutely right. It's against the First Amendment. Unfortunately, Supreme Court justices actually interpret the First Amendment. So that is what, that's what makes it so, so bad. Um, so there is, a, there is a crisis. There's a, a, a judicial crisis. There's a constitutional crisis. There's a democratic crisis, a secularism crisis that is happening um, in the U.S. right now. And sort of everything's at stake. Um, and so there, the solutions to this. Okay, one of the solutions uh, that they're talking about, uh, the Democrats, is if they win an overwhelming majority, if it is a landslide like a lot of you know polls seem to be, I mean, there's a there's actually higher than normal chance of this being a landslide compared to previous elections. You know, it's been really close, but it seems like it could be more. 
if it's an electoral landslide and if it's in the Senate and in the House, uh, if they do really well, they have the potential uh, to expand the Supreme Court from nine seats to 13 seats, which means that they immediately get to make four judicial appointments to the Supreme what? Court. That no is, way. that's what they're actually going for right now. It's a nightmare. That's a plan. So they're threatening this, and they're threatening the conservatives with this. Uh, conservatives are are going to probably bet on, bet on the fact that they won't have the kind of majorities to actually uh, get that through, and to be able to do that. But that is where the fight is right now. The fight right now, very seriously, is at first this was like basically a far left idea that you know we gotta expand the Supreme Court and then just stack it with liberal justices. But you're in the situation right now where there are mainstream maybe, um, liberals. Maybe it's the only about. solution. What do you think about it? Maybe this is the only solution. I think that's the only solution too. I think that's mm. what you have to do. Right? Mm. So, so he, here's for people to understand, like, you know, all the fight. Can you reduce my volume? Because I'm hearing a little bit echo. Um, all the fights that I uh, that we see in the United States when it comes to, for example, the Freedom from Religion Foundation, all the cases that we like, people are funding and supporting to uphold secularism in the United States, it's all based on their reading uh, of the Constitution, the interpretation of the Constitution. And basically the main ammunition that these organizations and all these secular activists have all of that will be just swept right from under them all everything that they're fighting for will be for nothing if they don't have this interpretation of this of the constitution behind their backs for them to make this argument like for, imagine years and years of waking making slow 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 progress and trying to go oh my god uh, the separation of church and state is being violated here 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 like trying all the efforts all of it could, could just go away over a few months right and Again, if somebody comes in with these Supreme Court judges and come interpret it in a different way, even if they – so they're there for a lifetime. But even if after a lifetime, if they remove this precedent – so it's even more than a lifetime that you have to be worried about because that interpretation will still remain there and it will set a precedent for many, many other laws to come after it. Like this is like turning back the clock in, in a, such a dramatic way and I don't, under, I don't know if – a secularist in the United States understand how big of a loss this is going to be, like how bad things can get. But go on, Ellie. Yeah, I, I, and I actually, I actually also, so I, this is an opportunity for two things. One of them I've said before, one of them I haven't. Okay. And actually, you know what? This is a really good comment. I want to address this first. Jim King is saying she is a, the, the Amy Coney Bennett, uh, Barrett. Uh, he's saying that she is a nutcase, but wrong move politically for Dems to attack her based on religious beliefs. Trump loves to play up the victimhood. He will say he is protecting religious freedom of expression under siege. So you're right. You're right. And I don't think that Democrats are going to attack her for being religious. That's not going to happen. Right now, what's happening is that uh, Trump is losing support among Catholics. Like she, as far as I know, is a Catholic. I mean, she's a Catholic. Um, and she is a Catholic nut job. Okay, extreme. So building the kingdom of God and everything. So he wants a point that he wants to get back some of the Catholic support. He also wants to get back some of the evangelical support that he's lost, which hasn't been a lot, but uh, he wants to galvanize uh, the evangelicals around this. And there's a lot of uh, political motivation. If Democrats go and attack say, and say that, oh, she's a religious nut job, that's not going to fly. They're going to lose the support that they want to. So what they can do, there's, there's two angles that they're going to go with. One is your universal health care, Obamacare is going to be gone. The Republicans don't have a separate have a uh, uh, an alternative for that. So that's one thing they can do. If you do this, Obamacare is dead. All of you who have pre existing conditions covered and everything, you're gonna all lose your health care. Like 30, 40 million people are gonna lose your health care. Second thing they can go after is the abortion issue that Armin was talking about. Um, they say that she is going to Roe v. Wade's gonna be overturned. If you ask Americans what they think about abortion, right? There are more pro choice people than pro life people. Slightly more. But if you ask them whether they want Roe v. Wade overturned, 70% of them don't want it overturned. Right? So that is a losing issue for Republicans. So those are the angles that they have to go after. They can't overall go after this angle of, you know, she's too religious. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I wanted to say, Armin, uh, if you don't have anything to say right now, I just want to make these two things. But go ahead first. 
Um, I just want to respond to uh, Jim King's comment. I also think maybe it's not a right play to me um, for right strategy uh, for the Dems to attack her based on her religious beliefs. But I think for us, um, you know, the ACS content creators and the secular content creators, knowing that they are, uh, they do have a secular audience. And that this does matter. This does matter to them. I think for us, this would be the right strategy, and especially for any other uh, ACS podcast, YouTube channel, blogger, Twitter account, Facebook account, uh, because th that group of people do need to be motivated to to and be told that it's important for them to go vote. And for them, you know, this is this matters, and this might motivate the, the whole idea of separation church and state, and not having a loony religious person. Um, it, it, to them it matters and it does so again not not every strategy works for every group of people but I think for us we do need to keep pointing that out that's actually one of the points I was going to make uh, almost 25% of the US population don't identify with any religious affiliation anymore they don't have any religious affiliation according to the polls it's 12% more than 10 years ago in 10 years that the religious nuns have gone to N O N E S have gone from like have shot up 12%. So, and, and among millennials, right, it's in, it's about a third. So this is, but for some reason, secularists and atheists agnostics, they don't want to organize because they feel like it's, it's a little bit too much like the religious people. Now is the time. This is the reason what you're seeing right now. This is the reason for all of the secularists to start organizing and having political lobbies like, you know, other groups have, the Muslim groups have, right? And Muslim groups are a very, very tiny part of the population compared to this. Like, they're, they're more um, secularists in the U.S., secular thinking people in the United States right now. It's a, it's a bigger minority than Jews, Hindus, uh, Muslims, uh, and, you know, all of these other minority religions combined, right, several times over. It's the, this is the time to organize. Um, the, the second thing I want to say is it's not necessarily, you know, this whole religion secular is related, but uh, if you're a Democrat, you have to go out and vote in person. I know there's a pandemic. Put on your face mask, right? Use your hand sanitizer. Stay six feet away from everybody else, but go out there in person. Don't. Why can't do they do me? If you do mail-in ballot in the primaries this year, about 530,000 mail-in ballots were rejected. So mail-in ballots get rejected at a much, 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 much higher rate than in-person ballots uh, because of mismatched signatures, missing signatures, uh, arriving after the deadline, uh, probably but, the envelope. But I don't want us to be responsible for putting anybody in danger of getting disease, okay? So again, I'll just do the yeah, disclaimer. No, me. You can disagree on this. Okay. No, no, yeah, but I just want to put a disclaimer, just do the disclaimer that we're not, I mean, Ali is a doctor, but we're not like um, disease control experts or anything like that, right? So you do go, like if you're deciding to go out there actually in public and vote there, make sure you uh follow the guidelines and read whether you're at risk or you're not at risk. Like mm -hmm. we do not accept responsibility for that. Just make sure you, uh, you go and do your research and go use trusted sources to see if that's a good idea or not. And that's yeah, exactly. That's a, so that's a disclaimer, but I, I am saying this and this is something that obviously a lot of liberals don't agree with. Right. But this mail in voting thing, Trump says is a big problem with them with fraud. He's completely wrong. There's virtually no issue with fraud. But this is a real problem with mail-in ballots. Mail-in ballots are rejected in huge numbers. Um, and for perspective, uh, Trump basically won in 2016 because of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, where he won by a margin of about 80,000 votes. This year in the primaries, in just those three states, 60,000 mail-in ballots were rejected because of you know signatures, envelope problems, whatever. So your best bet if you really want to do anything is wear your face mask, stay six feet away from people. Don't touch anything. Get a bottle of sanitizer and go vote in person. It's the only way that's all. And, and the, here's the other reason this is important is because after this, Trump has already made a really big preemptive deal about mail-in ballots for no reason. Uh, so in the battleground States where the margin is really thin, right? Where he loses by a very small margin, he is going to legally contest it. This guy is not going to concede. He's going to legally contest those states. 
And guess where those legal battles will end up? Armin, where are they going to end up? Those legal where? battles? The Supreme Court. Right. And the Supreme Court is now going to have how many conservative justices? Six versus three liberal ones. So even if John Roberts sides with the liberals, he has it made and they will side with him. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, what if like the whole suggestion of stacking up, you know, increasing the uh, size of the court, if we, if the Democrats suggest that, what if that, that happens during a Republican presidency? Like that's also a possibility, right? Well, we imagine it, that you'd have to have big majorities. This can only happen if you have a democratic president, a democratic majority Senate, a democratic I'm just saying like this could bite the back in the butt again in, the, in a way that they didn't imagine. If the thing, it seems like every time Democrats suggest something, um, it doesn't happen when they're in power and then Republicans are like, hey, we like that idea that you had just right there and we're not going to use it. And it just comes and back, <laughs> like backfires on them. I don't know. I know yeah. So that by the end of the next eight years, you're going to have like uh, 27 judges in the Supreme Court. <laughs> it's actually great. It would be amazing if you had that many judges because honestly, at this point, these nine judges have, like, they are God power. in the yeah. US. They're, they're God. They're not elected. They're, appoint, they're appointed by an elected president. Yes. They're not directly elected and they have mm -hmm. lifetime appointments. So it's they can. Change. Yeah. It yeah. is, yeah, it's the, the whole system of yes. this sort of Supreme Court having the final say in everything is. Uh, yeah. It, it is, this is why you shouldn't worship the Constitution because there are things in there that are wrong. They need to be changed. You're like, oh, the Constitution cannot do wrong. Guys. Like it are, came down from the heavens. I swear, the Republicans treat the Constitution like the Quran. Yeah. The way they interpret it, the, the way they talk about it. Are you a textual interpreter like Scalia? Are you more of a, a you know, do you apply it to modern times? Like, how do you? Like these are people who lived in the, they were great and they're visionaries and they were ahead of their time, all these sort of enlightenment thinker, founding fathers. Yeah. The Can I swear? I can't swear, right? No, no, no swearing. But this is in the 1700s, okay? In the 1700s, early 1800s. These guys, you know, these, they were slave owners. You know, they didn't really know a lot of, they didn't know about evolution. They don't know about all these other things. And they wrote this constitution. You have to, it is, they treat it like the Quran. And the good thing is, yes, you have amendments. They, they treat it like, Armin, the Republicans a lot of times are like, oh, no, we're not going to change our constitution. We're not going to. That's the one thing that's set in stone. We're not going to rewrite it. It's like it's got amendments in it. Amendments, supposed, that's a definition of amendments. It's supposed to be rewritten. That's the whole point. Right. right. You should be able um, to do it. Like, uh, you know, stop venerating it the way that you do. Before I read this question by one of our patrons, I do want to mention that if you're listening to this on a podcast, um, uh, the audio version of this, not um, uh, consider becoming a patron and joining us in, when, when we are live when we're doing this because that only our patrons get to do that unless we're doing our monthly Q&A. Uh, but yeah, so consider becoming a patron and join us in this conversations live when we're having them. And he, he, for, for example, you could post a question like this when we are on air. And he, Ali, do you want to read this question? Yes, this is from Vasundara Majithia. Uh, they're saying, do you think LGBT rights would be under threat too in a conservative court? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you're talking about under threat, do I think it's going to be overturned? Um, I don't, man, I don't know. I overturned, don't, which, what's going to be overturned? Same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage. Same -sex marriage. Oh, Mary. I don't think that's going to be, no. I don't, is that? Uh, it could be. It could be. I mean, these people are... Uh, and then there's some very, <laughs> I don't think okay, that would be very no, I don't think that's possible. Imagine uh, waking up one day and be like, gay marriage illegal again in the United States. I don't think that is is that like oh my god, I can't even imagine that happening. So let's look at the margin that it passed with, uh, in uh, 2016, 2015. It passed but with, uh, no, it passed with a five to four margin. Is Ober Obergefell v. Hodges. Have we, do we have any other examples other than India where same-sex marriage became legal and then after becoming legal, it did become illegal? No, I, I don't think we have even an example for that. We don't, but same-sex no. marriage became legal very, very recently. So I don't think we've had enough time. We I don't think that time. will happen. I, I'm a, man, that would be like nightmare scenario. <laughs> Like imagine, imagine how bad things would be in the United States if they managed to actually undo, like 
same-sex marriage being legal and then they going ahead and making it illegal. Wow. Right. So this was the case wow. same-sex marriage no. became legal when Anthony Kennedy, Justice Anthony Kennedy, was very libertarian in the sense and we thought, we thought this in a libertarian way. Right? Gay people should be allowed to get married. Um, and uh, he was also a, a conservative appointee. He joined all of the liberal judges and uh, same-sex marriage was passed in a five to four decision. So again, a razor thin margin, just like a one vote margin in the Supreme Court. That's how it was passed. That means that there are four justices who are still on there. Kennedy's not on there anymore. Kennedy's not on there. The other four who voted against same sex marriage are still on there, right? Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, John Roberts, right? And uh, who's the fourth guy? The fourth, uh, Antonin Scalia at the time, right? Now the people that you have on there, Kennedy's not there. So you already have a majority over there that is opposed to same-sex marriage, right? And uh, you're going to have a Catholic nut job potentially joining here who is obviously opposed to same-sex marriage, and it's going to be a six to three. So yes, of course it's under threat. The only thing that goes against it potentially is that a, a majority of uh, Republicans now also support same-sex marriage. A majority of the United States supports same-sex marriage, and so do a majority of Republicans. So um, that may be a, a good thing, but is it under threat? Yes. Uh, Susanna is saying, my grandfather literally reads the Declaration of Independence and the preamble of the Constitution at the dinner table alongside the prayer before eating. Yeah, okay. Every single time? That should the Declaration of annoying. Independence? Wow. That is annoying. But anyway, what do you think about what Jim is saying here? So Jim is saying Democrats shouldn't focus on expanding court. Focus should be on health care and failure of leadership on COVID. Yeah, you're right. From a campaign perspective, from the campaign perspective, they should, right now, look, the, the worst thing for Trump, the worst thing is a pandemic. Okay, that is the number one issue that's on all voters' minds. Even people who formerly supported Trump have gone against him because of the pandemic. That is a reason that he's losing. Democrats need to make sure that stays in the headlines. He's been trying to distract from it, you know, moved away, talked about the violence in Wisconsin, the violence in Portland. That kind of backfired on him, didn't work. Turns out that it didn't affect the polls. In fact, the polls actually went more in favor of Biden uh, when he talked about the violence. So that didn't really work out the way that pretty much everybody, including me, thought it would work. Um, so this Supreme Court thing is a new thing that he thinks uh, will be in his favor. But you're right that for the campaign, for campaign purposes, they need to talk about the pandemic. And when it comes to the Supreme Court, the only thing they should be doing is they should be using this to galvanize Democrats to bring in donations and to get more money to spend and talk about the pandemic. And the second thing is they should be talking about Obamacare, how the, the Supreme Court can reverse Obamacare. Um, uh, and I, I actually think they should stay away from Roe v. Wade. I don't like, you know, most people support it anyway. The India comment I made, I know it's been decriminalized. It went from being criminal, not criminal. So it was gay marriage became legal and then they did it and then they brought it back again and now they brought now that it's legal in india again now they're saying well it is legal but it's not our culture so yeah i know it kept, it kept on going back and forth for a while in india i know about that well, yeah um, i thought it was decriminalized a long time ago no it, it did but then they i did it and then they brought it back then it, they legalized it again okay i don't know and now, why like if you look at have you seen krishna have you go and google a picture of krishna I mean, oh, he just hey. looks so, he looks so, like, he's got such a flamboyant gay thing. You miss, okay, okay, you're under, you're, first of all, you're confusing sexual expression with sex, gender identity, you know, gender oh, expression not, when it comes to man, orientation. Okay, okay, you're, again, I'm not going to get into that. Um, I, I'm not, hashtag not all, I mean, not all gay people like that, but hey, he's pretty yeah. fabulous. I mean, this is a compliment. It's like your compliment okay. to Kali. Um, okay, gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation are three different things. Just my yeah, but that. there's a lot of overarm and fun. Yes. Um, yeah. Wait, hold on. Let me. I, I wasn't to. I, I wanted you to address this one here by Jim King. Uh, Jim King says no same-sex marriage would won't be overturned, but companies will be able to not bake cakes for gay marriages. Yeah, I. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, I don't, like, the majority of people in the U.S. do support it, 
But if they wanted oh, to overturn so, it, and if it came to a vote, there is a chance that it all right, could. Guys, I misspoke. Not gay marriage. Gay... Sorry, sorry. Not, not... Civil unions? Yeah, no, 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 no. It was... Um, I misspoke. It's, it's basically homosexuality. Homosexuality was decriminalized. Not gay marriage was never legal in India. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I confuse... Again, I confuse the... The de decriminalization of homosexuality when legalizing gray marriage. That is still a fight that is being fought. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Actually, I should know this because we're actually trying to... Um, I, I do know this. I'm just, I just misspoke. Because we're actually post forcing for that, pushing for that. No, not forcing. We're pushing for that with our next art uh, between uh, Sexy Kelly and Sita making out. Susanna wanted us to... <laughs> Have them wearing wedding rings, okay? Make Sita and Sexy oh. Kelly. Yeah, so yeah. Susanna wants them to have. Apparently, the story is that Sita has divorced Ram, um, and Kelly also got a divorce, and now they're in love, and they got married, and they both have wedding rings. So we're pushing for legalization of gay marriage it, in I India. Mean, no, that's great. Yeah, they should. And they're going to have a rainbow flag behind them or something like that. Yes, yes. So I do know this. Asundar, I do know this. I don't know why I misspoke. I apologize. Yeah. But go on. So we, we are almost up on time. But I want to actually know from the few of you who are you know, watching this right now, um, I actually think this is a very, very consequential topic. I think the Supreme Court thing is uh, potentially game-changing. Uh, so I did reach out to Andrew Seidel, uh, who is the constitutional attorney, uh, he's with the Freedom from Religion Foundation, and he's very in tune with uh, you know the the issues, the implications of all of this for secularism. So I, if if you guys want, I I I would love to actually have him on here, and I think Armin would too, to really talk about this and see what it is going to be. So we could have mm. a too about this in the future Great. of secularism. So um, if you guys are into it, uh, just let us know, and we're going to bring that episode to you very soon, and I'll set up a, yeah. a date with him. But this is. Uh, I, people, I feel like are under uh, thinking of this as just another campaign issue. This is not. This is something that is going to go on for decades. And whatever happens in the U.S. is going to bleed over everywhere. Anytime something happens in the U.S. and it gets normalized like this, the effects are global. Okay, so it's uh, it's it's a very 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 important juncture, whether you're American or or not. Um, you know, where we are with this whole Supreme Court thing. So this is potentially a disaster waiting for it. It's actually like The Handmaid's Tale, Armin. Have you ever seen The Handmaid's Tale or read the book? Yeah, yes, yes. You know how it starts? Like, it's just one thing. Oh, it's just one thing. You know, how's that? Okay, but let's not do the slippery slope, slope fallacy, though. Oh, it's uh, it's not going to be the... Okay, it's not a fallacy. I'm just talking to you. There are, you know how you talk about critical race theory and how there is, like, dominoes falling? It's it's a very similar. I'm talking concept. about dominoes that already fell, not the dominoes that could happen. That's what I'm talking about. I'm like there are dominoes. There are yeah, but we're never gonna get to the right. like we're very, 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 very unlikely for us to even get close to a handmaid's tale situation. Not a handmaid's tale right. situation, but yes. uh, I'm using that as an analogy of you know the yes. dominoes one by one. Yes. Um, okay, so let's do that. Yeah, let's get Andrew Seidel here and let's do uh, another episode on this. Uh, and get some more of the details of what's really at stake. Let's talk mm -hmm. about potentially whether uh, they can stack the courts or what de what options Democrats have now that they themselves they killed the filibuster. Um, right. And so one of the things they could do is when they do stack the courts, you know, they need a majority. They need big majorities. Hey, I, I really want this to go under sixty minutes because if if it's if it's not showing the one hour mark, more people will click on it. Okay, so let's let's end this very fast. I just want to read this comment by Jim. Yes, you didn't get into how religious groups will have more power to discriminate. Uh, on who they hire and the services they provide based upon religious beliefs beyond abortion. Right. Let's do that when we have a when we have I Andrew did. on. Yeah, so this absolutely needs a part two, and we're going to get Andrew yeah. on. We will do that. So yes. thank you very much, Jim. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys, everybody. And again, guys, if you're not a patron, if you're listening to this later, not during the live stream, please consider becoming a patron and join us in these live streams that we have here. It's a cozy crowd. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's very fun. Yeah, there's a lot more to talk about. Nope. This. The secular jihadists have been made possible thanks to the Illuminati and the covert support of Israel and the CIA. That's what we have been told, but we haven't received our checks yet. 
If you like what we do, please support us. Share the podcast with your friends. Write and tweet us with topic and guest suggestions. Or head over to secularjihadist.com and give a dollar or more for exclusive access to live video. Have your questions read and answered on the air and more. Till next time, may the flying spaghetti monster be with you.